Hey, all you Hossamaniacs out there, it's the one true Hossman Comics right here. I, there's probably nobody trying to pretend to be me anyway. But Deadpool's probably out today. Have you guys seen it? I'm not going to talk about the movie, so don't worry about spoilers. Because I'm not seeing it for like a week. Ugh, Jeff. But he's out of town, so I can't wait. I gotta wait until he comes back. Not a big deal. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Deadpool. The Merc with a Mouth. Over a thousand appearances in the Marvel comics. You guys know who he is. He's the chimichanga-loving, dog-holding, B. Arthur wanting to marry and Merc with a Mouth. He's over the top dick and fart jokes nowadays but he wasn't always that way and he wasn't always everywhere he debuted in 1993 and we're gonna take a look at the early evolution of deadpool deadpool are you watching me sleep this whole time freak he was created by rob liefeld and a guy named fabian nixia nixia i'm gonna say it wrong a few times through this video deal with it new mutants number 98 uh, by the aforementioned rob liefeld and fabian nixia it says here that liefeld also did the plot but to see the artist's name above the writer, like that means you're truly in the 90s. Anyway, in this first appearance of Deadpool, we also get the first appearance of Gideon and Domino, sort of. We'll get there to explain why it's not really Domino. The mysterious Mr. Tolliver has hired Deadpool to find and eliminate Cable. So in the library, Deadpool attacks. He manages to hold his own against Cable and Cannonball, showing that he's got all kinds of high-tech tricks up his sleeve to give him that edge in combat. He even continues the upper hand when Richter, Sunspot, and Boom Boom join the fray. Though he does appear to get a broken jaw, he still doesn't shut up. He only really loses the fight when Domino shows up out of nowhere and puts three blades into Deadpool's back. I'm going to interject and say, like, the way Domino does show up, she's just a natural part of the team. Like, I didn't know this was Domino's first appearance. Once again, it's not actually Domino. But the character shows up and Cable's like, hey, Dom, how's it going? Woo! Glad to have you here. Like, just the rapport, she fits right in. Like, it's not her first appearance. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I feel like it's a good thing. Anyway, they bandage Deadpool up and mail him back to Tolliver via FedEx. So let's talk about Deadpool here. What's established in his first appearance and what isn't? Right off the bat, you got the red and black classic iconic Deadpool costume. Like many heroes, his first costume is going to be the look he sticks with. There will be tweaks and changes and some drastic changes, but he always go back to the classic red and black. So good for them. They made, they were onto something right from the beginning, costume-wise. The Merc with a Mouth is a moniker that Deadpool has had through the years. It didn't. Nobody says it here, but it is there. The establishing of what the Merc with a Mouth is. He's a mercenary, and he's got a mouth. He never shuts up. That is right here. He's not as humorous as he would become. He's not as quippy he just is continually talking but that is established right here as far as his healing factor and powers nothing at all is established here in this first issue we see he's got high-tech tricks he's got his swords he's got his guns he can fight he's got a huge ability but like he takes three blades in the back and then gets bandaged up he, his healing factor doesn't exist here though it's not directly contradicted either also uh they don't mention him being canadian but right off the bat he is fairly established for who he is especially when you bear in mind that he is the villain here he wasn't created to become a headlining franchise that would appear in several comics a month the new mutants would disappear and make way for x-force where deadpool would make his second appearance in x-force's second issue and even right here on the cover they say deadpool's back plastered in the corner so they might have known they were onto something it seems tolliver has sent deadpool to retrieve some japanese technology for him while the canadian government has sent kane in his very first appearance. Kane refers to himself as Weapon X, and Deadpool asks if that's actually trademarked. A few things happen here in this fight. Kane's inner monologue tells us that it is characteristic for Deadpool to never stop running his mouth. Deadpool also mentions that he has jaw wired shut for two months. That one blew my mind because his healing factor should have healed his jaw. I wonder if that's going to be retroactively introduced or if we're going to see him get his healing factor. I haven't read any early appearances of Deadpool. I'm excited about this. Deadpool also does go on to say that I hate this country. I've always hated this country. I hated Department H and I hated the Weapon X program and so on. So right there, it's setting up some mystery and connecting him to Weapon X and thus Wolverine. I don't like that he says he hates Canada, but I'm going to keep reading anyway. And then he gets shot in the back by GW Bridge and escapes and doesn't show up again in this issue. I know a lot of this is going to be one main creative team, or Fabian Mix Nixia, just one writer, though other writers do come in towards the end. I know I usually focus on people that have been juggled around, but this it's Deadpool. It's going to be cool to piece this together with breadcrumbs and see how much of the Deadpool we know today was around back at the beginning. It's also worth noting that there is something in his voice. Like later on, he would just have yellow speech bubbles, which I'm still not entirely sure how I'm supposed to read that. But in these early appearances, he had red shadowing around his speech bubbles and sometimes yellow. It became mostly yellow, but the red would crop back up and in. And I'm like, I'm still not sure. Do you guys know how to read that? Let me know in the comments below if you kind of understand how to read his speech bubble. X-Force issue number four gives us one single Deadpool panel while Spider-Man and X-Force are fighting Juggernaut! 
while Cable is shooting Black Tom, you racist son of a- and letting him fall down an elevator shaft, Deadpool grabs him and says that he's on Mr. Tolliver's hit list. I read these all digitally and I actually have a copy of X-Force number four right here. I'm curious to see if uh, anything was edited in the digital release for any reason. So I'll check that out. Oh. So then we go on to X-Force number five. Honestly, these small one-page bit appearances are killing me. But Deadpool teleports in and delivers Juggernaut and Black Tom to Tolliver. He even calls him his boss. So he actually does seem pretty subservient to this Tolliver guy, which isn't really in Deadpool's character. Also, the teleporter was something he had well established back then. Was that part of his power or was that something he had? We'll have to keep reading and find out. He next appeared in Nomad number four. It is written by Fabian Nikizia so it makes sense for Deadpool to show up. There's a big meeting of various crime bosses, and that includes Mr. Tolliver of the European Cartel. Anyway, there's a guy that everyone there wants to get, and Nomad's trying to protect him, so Deadpool goes after him. Deadpool and Nomad have a fight. Nothing really much of note happens, except for Deadpool teleporting all over the place. And after getting shot in the face with a blank, he does allude to the fact that there is something wrong with his face under the mask, which we in the future know is true. Oh, and despite being the bad guy of the issue, Deadpool still does assassinate his target. X-Force number 10 is where he would next appear in one panel at the end of the book. After this video, it's going to be a while before I cover somebody from the 90s. Like, this is, this is ridiculous. Anyway, it appears that Domino was working for Tolliver as well to report on Cable, but she stopped, and now Deadpool is being sent after her. Which picks up in X-Force number 11, and the first thing he does is knock out Siren, which is very interesting given their future together. He then attacks Shatterstar because he's itching for a fight, which he wins, and then he catches up with Domino and does not hold back. Deadpool plays equal rights with his butt whoopings. He does refer to her as his ex-girlfriend and keeps calling her Vanessa to which she calls him Wade, and I believe this is the first time, well, it is the first time I saw him called Wade. Not a cool name. Anyway, he beats her up and reminds her that she still works for Tolliver. Oh, and the real Domino is locked up in Tolliver's basement. The Domino we've seen has been copycat this whole time, making this issue the actual first appearance of Domino besides a flashback in X-Force number eight, in case you're keeping track of that for whatever reason. Deadpool shows up again in X-Force number 14. Cable is busting into Tolliver's headquarter and... And Deadpool shows up on the last page. H how many times is that? Only twice so far on the last page, but four single issue appearances so far. Anyway, in the next issue, Deadpool and Cable duke it out and Cable gives Deadpool such a beating that he manages to actually shut him up for a few panels. And then Wade eventually gets the upper hand, the real Domino blasts him with a BFG. And then Cable defeats Tolliver once and for all. Or does he? Anyway, this leaves Deadpool seemingly unemployed, and he seems to still not have a super healing factor. Also, his face mask is partially torn, and it's not clear that his skin seems alright. His back isn't, but he just got fried, and he teleports away. His next appearance was in an X-Men Toys R Us Premium Edition promotional comic. We get to see Deadpool and Wolverine for the first time in the same comic. They don't face off against each other. Deadpool is teamed up with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and they attack the X-Mansion. We actually get to see some of the early kind of hijinks Deadpool would become known for. I kind of chalked that one up to no one really caring here. But Juggernaut knocks off Scott's ruby quartz glasses and Deadpool wears them and even says, We'll take good care of your shades, you'll see. Oh wait, you can't! That kind of stuff is the humor that I preferred from Deadpool. Believe it or not, before the movie came out, Deadpool had a lot more wit than just ball sack and masturbation jokes. The whole demand for Deadpool to be R-rated like really blew my mind. The violence and stuff, I get why that should be R-rated, but for the most part, Deadpool was a PG-13, even PG comic. He made funny jokes, he did a lot of stuff, but he wasn't like, hey, I'm gonna rip farts and fuck your grandma. Like, <laughs> Deadpool wasn't like that. He became like that later. Really, after Ryan Reynolds was cast as Hannibal King in Blade Trinity, everybody from there was just like, Ryan Reynolds has to be Deadpool, and that's when Ryan Reynolds got into the character himself. But, like, reading into the comics wasn't like that. I'm not saying it's bad or it's out of place, but it just seems like a lot of people were projecting a juvenile sense of humor onto Deadpool when he didn't quite have that in the comics. That's all I'm saying. In this issue, he actually squared off against Gambit, but when a big-ass Sentinel showed up, Deadpool decided that this was not the job he was paid for, and he and most of the Brotherhood left. X-Force number 21, here we go. Deadpool's in four issues in a row, so this should be good. X-Force is fighting War Machine, and Deadpool gets one page in the middle. He's looting some of Tolliver's safe houses for information on where someone he's calling Nessie is. I assume that's Vanessa, and he says he's gonna cut her. X-Force number 22, he tries to do just that. Vanessa seems to be stuck in the form of her friend Tina. Deadpool wants a crack at them both, but some dude named Sluggo shows up and blows a hole in one of them, and mentions Tolliver's will. So I assume that all the bad guys in Tolliver's employ were named in this will, and they have to battle it out till there's one survivor. Sounds actually pretty cool. It's nice of Deadpool to get a little sub-story going on in the back pages of X-Force. It's cool. It really shows the popularity of the character 
character. Also, actually, by this point, Rod Liefeld has been gone for quite a while, so I am really thinking he's overrated. Well, he's overrated. Everybody knows that. But I think it's blown out of proportion how much credit he actually gets for creating Deadpool. I think that's... Here, I'm going to go on a little rant, but that's outside of this. I think the creation of a character goes so far beyond who came up with the idea when so much of the idea gets fleshed out beyond years of them. The Deadpool that we see in New Mutants number 98 is not the Deadpool that is in the movies. It's not the Deadpool that's in the comics today. It's not the Deadpool that became popular. So to put all the credit just simply on that, like I think later we're going to see guys like Joe Kelly really form the character. And uh, I'm not saying he should get credit for creating him but it's just creating a character is a collaborative effort especially with a popular character and i think a lot of that is what i'm doing these evolution of videos to try and portray anyway back to the funny books in x-force number 23 i guess deadpool and sluggo have now teamed up and as they catch up with vanessa so does domino she spent a year locked up while vanessa lived her life so she is pissed so much so that she blasts a huge hole in Deadpool. In X-Force 24, we see the body. Deadpool is lying there, appearing quite dead. They even assume he's dead, but Vanessa takes a laser gun and blasts him some more. Sluggo too. She does say that they aren't dead and it'll take more than a few laser blasts to the head and chest to kill these two. So there's the first real hint that Deadpool might have a healing factor, though he is done for in this issue. But in the very next month, June 1993, he would get his first titled series in Deadpool, The Circle Chase. It's written by Fabian Nikieza, with art by Joe Maduariara. The first issue is the first time the term the Merc with a Mouth is used, as well as Kane calls him Wade Wilson, getting a last name for the first time. This miniseries is all about the tease we got earlier about Tolliver's will. It seems the last survivor of his employees is entitled to a huge prize, said to be the most powerful weapon in the world, and they're willing to fight for it. In the first two issues, we get Deadpool teaming up with Weasel for the first time, fighting with Garrison Kane, as well as a face-off with Juggernaut and Black Tom Cassidy, not to mention the first appearance of classic Deadpool villain Slayback. His humor is starting to come out a little more here. I personally liked it when Black Tom hit him with an energy blast and he asked what he was going to do about it. Giving a classic Deadpool response, he said, Probably just going to sit here and blister. But also, while this is his story, he's the good guy, murder isn't off the table and he does hijack an entire plane. Before the next issue, Deadpool actually appeared in the Avengers number 366. Deadpool crosses swords with the Blood Wraith, a Black Knight villain, I guess? Can you imagine in 20 years when I get around to doing an early evolution of the Blood Wraith? You're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss that kind of content coming way down the pipe. But seriously though, if you're enjoying this, subscribe, hit the like button, tell a friend, say, did you did you see the new Hossman Comics video this week? Gosh darn, it was great. Have a have a coffee. Meet somebody, somebody you haven't seen since college or high school or whatnot that you think likes comic books. Call them up, go for coffee, watch my videos together and rebond please. Anyway, Deadpool is fighting with the Blood Wraith because he thinks it's tied to the whole Tolliver business. In fact, he thinks the Ebony Blade is the big, bad, powerful weapon. They fight and then Black Knight shows up and we've got ourselves a three-way dance. Though Deadpool does get taken out and he teleports away with the Ebony Blade and I was stoked. I was like, holy crap. Deadpool's gonna get the Ebony Blade in the next issue of his series? Heck yeah! And then I saw the editor's note saying this took place before Deadpool number one, and I wondered if I was missing something, but no! Blood Wraith teleports after Deadpool and steals back his stolen sword. Now on to Deadpool issue number three. The fighting continues as Deadpool gets beaten by the executive elite. Comcast, Rive, and Makeshift. Don't worry if you don't know who they are, they do not matter. They hook Mr. Wilson up to a vice that lets us peer into his memories, and this does matter. Check out this handsome devil. For fun reference, here's what Ryan Reynolds looked like in 1993. My poochie needs me. I'm going home now. Then we do see that he joined Weapon X and he is very, very full of cancer. And then it happens. We get Deadpool unmasked. Dear God, what is that thing? Weasel rescues Deadpool and he gets revenge on his captors and discovers that the prize is in Nepal. And also, Slayback has found Vanessa. So we're going to get some answers in issue number four. But yeah, it's really cool, like they say, he joined Weapon X because he had such aggressive cancer, which is in keeping with his character, and that's what it was in the movie too. Wasn't quite Weapon X, but there you have it. Anyway, back to issue four, it's a bit of a mess, and Slayback shows up, and Deadpool's actually afraid of him. He is someone that Deadpool very clearly disposed of ten years ago, so he's surprised to see him back. But he's afraid of him, and the prize is revealed to be the Android Zero. Kane is working on the Android, Weasel's there, Vanessa's also there. Vanessa ends up taking a spike for Wade, and Zero activates and he takes out Slayback. Because Vanessa can copy powers, Wade finally talks about his cellular structure is constantly regenerating and his skin won't stop healing itself, so he can actually save Vanessa, and he does, learning that he can do more than just kill in the process. Deadpool actually does show some genuine emotion here for the first time. He's next 
going to appear in Secret Defenders number 15, 16, and 17. They are not really worth reading. The Secret Defenders was an amazing concept where Doctor Strange would handpick a team of heroes and set them forth on a task of good versus evil. These three issues we see Deadpool team up with Doctor Druid and 1990's Luke Cage, as well as someone who is not Spider-Woman, that is the Shadow Woman, and she would later go by the name Sepulchre. Anyway, they team up and fight zombies and stuff. Cage is initially hesitant to team with Deadpool, but they do end up working well together. Deadpool says he's only helping because he knows he'd have to carry Luke's heavy corpse out otherwise. To me, this is where I first actually see Deadpool's mouth truly unleashed. He is really quippy here, constantly talking, and now he's being even more humorous and tossing out pop culture references, becoming much more Deadpool. And I think that's basically because it was somebody else writing him, and they just basically, oh yeah, he talks all the time, he keeps talking, and that's where they kind of weren't doing quite what Fabian Nicaezia was doing, but they were doing their own thing, just thinking, okay, if this guy talks all the time, he's making quips, he's making references, here we go. And that's, once somebody else comes in, that's when it becomes there, right? That attitude would continue into Silver Sable and the Wild Pack number 23. Sable is in New York looking for Daredevil and Deadpool has picked up a contract on her, so he attacks. She fights back and their dialogue here shows that they have already known each other. But it is a small world in the mercenary game, so that does make sense. She shoots him a whole bunch and does say it won't kill him, and it doesn't. He's up in moments. For the first time, really showing just how powerful his healing factor would become. Anyway, Deadpool gets outmaneuvered and just kind of gives up. After this, he would get another miniseries by Mark Wade and Ian Churchill. He would show up again in Silver Sable and X-Force, not to mention his first real crossover with Wolverine in uh, Wolverine number 88. And then in 1997, Joe Kelly and Ed McGuinness would give Deadpool in his first ongoing series. And for my money, this is where Deadpool really gets formed into how we know him today. Well, how we knew him before he became a movie character. Just the popular Deadpool that really took off. Anyway, that has been the early evolution of the Merc with a mouth. Deadpool, did you guys learn something down below? I didn't really mention how he was a copy of Deathstroke, because I actually don't think he was. I think he's a mercenary. He's got a costume somewhat similar to Deathstroke. The name Wade Wilson came much later. So when, ugh, don't want to defend Liefeld at all, but when Rob Liefeld goes out there and says, no, I didn't copy him off of Deathstroke, like Liefeld wasn't around when the name Wade Wilson came out. So I don't know. Either way, I think over the years, he's gone in a very different direction than Slade Wilson. Uh, that's about it, folks. Uh, stay hasse and let me know your favorite Deadpool uh, moments. Golly gee. Hey, it's me, Hossman, breaking the fourth wall while editing to point out the fact that in all these issues, Deadpool did not once break the fourth wall. If you're watching this when it came out, next Thursday I'm going to do a live stream Deadpool costume and alternate version tier list. Maybe. I'll post about it. Bye-bye. That was really good. Still recording, that's good. Folks, misplaced my phone with my notes on it. We're going to talk about the boil. How do you She does say they aren't dead. It'll take more than a few laser bests. You see he's got high cat.